Welcome to the Alloy Physical Shader Framework walkthrough video. I'm Anton from Rust Limited, and we're going to be going over the contents and core features of the Alloy package and talking a bit about what physically based shading is. In broad strokes, physically based shading is the use of a lighting model that is informed by the physical laws of light and surface reflectivity. The most important of these is something called energy conservation which is that a material won't reflect more light through its diffuse and specular term than is coming into it from ambient and direct sources. The other huge benefit of physically based shading is that it's much easier to get a really wide variety of, of reflective behaviors on your objects. Oftentimes in the Blinfong model, most objects tend to look like different intensities of what looks like fundamentally the same sort of material. With physically based shading, it's much easier to get a really stark aesthetic difference between metals, glazes, plastics, and other sorts of matte materials with just a little bit of specularity to them. Now when comparing in this model, matte materials and metalloids, you get very, very different combinations of values. A matte material tends to have all of its color in its base tone with a nearly black F0, somewhere between 0 0.02 and 0 0.06, whereas a metalloid has a completely black albedo and has its color represented in its F0. Now this becomes a real pain to manage, typically, if you're having to manually set these values because you have all these wasted texture maps full of black. For this reason, in Alloy, we have, we've essentially done this swapping for you based upon whether you want a material to be metal, non-metal, or some weird exotic hybrid in between them via this parameter here called metalness. You can see me here in front of my gold example. As I drag this slider here down, this goes from being a metal with a really, really deep lower area here color-wise and at grazing angles, and becomes instead a fairly glossy matte material, almost looks like wet paint. Now in, in real world circumstances, for most materials, this metalness parameter is going to be either all the way at zero or all the way at one. But there are certain circumstances with say composites or car paint where you might want something in between. Separated out from this is material smoothness, which is a, a function of the micro texture that your material has. If you drag this all the way to the left, you're going to get a significantly more matte finish. Here we have a sort of matte metalloid here, or a matte dielectric material. Or we can pull the smoothness all the way up and get our sort of wet plastic look for a dielectric, or an exceptionally polished version of our metal. Once again, in real-world circumstances, you're probably never going to have the smoothness all the way up to the top unless you're going for a perfect mirror finish. Most materials t tend to be in the range of 0 to 0.6 or 0.7 with this parameter. In addition to setting these per material, you can set metalness and smoothness to be per pixel as well using this texture channel here. Note that these are packed into the red and alpha channels of this texture as they're both black and white maps so that you can also pack in, should you choose to use it, an ambient occlusion or cavity map here. You can keep these separate while you're iterating and designing your materials and working on your project, but later on when you want to lower the texture, total texture usage of your project, you can channel pack these together and use the same map. The last, and in some ways most important thing to look at in the core alloy shader here is something called a radially symmetric reflection map. Now what this is, is basically a lookup texture. You're going to use the same one which we've included in the package right here in the shaders folder in every material. And this was our in-house solution for dealing with circumstances where it was either inconvenient or too acid production intensive to generate a whole bunch of cube maps for materials but still wanting to have things look shiny without the presence of dynamic light. What this is 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 
I guess you could say a sort of generalized horizon line reflection that's been pre-computed for all of the specular powers, i.e. everything down from a very rough material up to a very shiny material. So even on the side of this where we have no dynamic light hitting it whatsoever, we're purely getting light probe ambience here, we can see that with the RSRM we still get this wonderful wide range of surface appearance. Lastly, you should note that every shader that I've talked about here has two variants in the alloy set. One of those variants, the RSRM stack, use just the radially symmetric reflection map for handling their reflectance. However, in certain cases you're still going to want a specific cube map reflection, especially for anything that's really chromed, some types of glass, etc. In those cases, there's a cube variant, which in our demo scene here you can play around switching by simply clicking on the cube button, and here you can see this exact same material, but with a cube map of its environment. Let's turn its smoothness up there. And so you can see it's getting a little bit of the red hue here from the sky. Let me switch that back. RSRM. Cube. So that about covers it for our intro video here. We're going to be putting out another very soon that goes into some greater technical depth, both on extending the set and most specifically workflow for physically based shading. How to get the most out of your metalness and smoothness textures, as well as some light mapping tips and tricks that I found to be useful over the course of using Alloy these past two years. If you have any questions for us, feel free to pop by the Unity forum thread that we've started on the set and ask a question. Peace.